Hello everyone, this is Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success and on this episode of Weight Loss Surgery Success, I'm going to talk a little bit about adding fentramine or an appetite suppressant to help with your weight loss plan. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success and again on this podcast we're going to talk a little bit about appetite suppressants, specifically fentramine. Now, fentramine's been around a long time and how it can help, potentially help, with a weight loss plan. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about medical weight loss or surgical weight loss. Sometimes people think that after they've had surgery that there's no way they can ever use appetite suppressant. Well, that's just not true. Certainly you can, so we can talk about it in a similar fashion as anyone that's trying or in any type of weight loss plan, because it can be helpful. Now, Appetite suppressants, a lot of them have come and gone over the years. Literally, there were, there were probably you know, different dozen of them in my career have come and gone over that. Fentramine's been around now for about 60 years, so it's kind of stood the test of time. It's very carefully FDA uh, regulated, so anyone who's on fentramine actually is going to have to be monitored very carefully for a number of different reasons, which I'll get into in here in just a second. Now, over the last year or two, there's actually been a couple new ones that have been that have come up on the, come out on the market that are now FDA approved. I'm not going to get into those so much today, but both Qsimia, Qsimia as well as Belvique are available. They tend to Qsimia is basically a combination of fentramine and topiramate, which is Topamax. Um, and together it can have uh, a, a good additive effect. It tends to be very expensive, so most insurance companies often aren't covering it at this point. It can run you know, more than $150 a month. Same thing with uh, Belvique, which is, uh, I'm not sure if it's available everywhere yet, but it's uh, similar to what used to be out there as fenfluramine, except it doesn't have the heart and lung problems with it. So subsequently, yes, it can be helpful, but tends to be very expensive. So we're not really going to talk about those today. So we're going to go uh, back to the old standby. Fentramine, again, it's been around for about 60 years. It is very closely regulated by the FDA, and one of the reasons that is, is uh, if you remember back in the mid-90s or so, there was a medication for weight loss called Fenfen. And Fenfen was a combination medication. It took two medications, put them together. The two medications were Fentermine, which we're talking about today, and then Fenfluramine. And what they found is that, boy, it worked really well for weight loss, but unfortunately there were some heart and lung problems that went along with it. And it seemed that actually the heart and lung problems really went along with the fenfluramine, not so much the fentramine. So the fenfluramine was taken off the market and you can't get it anymore. Um, fentramine has been on the market the whole time and it does not seem to actually cause those problems. So it is a very safe medication, but because of that association, it's still very closely regulated by the FDA. And it does need to be monitored because potentially it can have, uh, some people will notice a little increase in their blood pressure, but we typically don't see the uh, uh, long-term effects of the cardiac effects and the pulmonary effects with it, which could be life-threatening. Now, there are specific indications for using appetite suppressants. Typically, it's going to be having a body mass index over 30, okay? And that body mass index of 30 and up is a definition of obesity. Okay? Or having a body mass index of 28, which is still considered overweight. It may only be about 30 pounds or so overweight, um, but with medical problems, specifically like diabetes, high blood pressure, but you got to watch high blood pressure, you got to be well controlled, or sleep apnea, cholesterol problems those type of things. So if you've got medical problems associated with the weight, even if you're not that much overweight, potentially you could be on fentramine for, to help you with um, weight loss there. Now, fentramine won't prevent you from eating. What fentramine does, it tends to take the edge off hunger. 
my experience with the patients taking phenamine is what they typically notice is that, boy, this food looks really good, but I don't care very much. And that's what people tend to know is they don't care as much about eating. It's not that they can't eat or they won't eat or anything like that. So if it's not, if you're eating for other reasons, potentially it's not going to help you very much. But if you eat because either, when I find either cravings or that, gee, it's because it really looks good, tastes good. It's like, if you don't, fentramine often just takes that edge off. You don't care as much. Now, the other situation I see can be very helpful with are really two things. One is just cravings, carbohydrate cravings specifically. I think it can be very helpful. I think actually fentramine can work better for cravings than it can actually for getting rid of hunger. Okay. It also can help with carbohydrate withdrawal. One of the, the some of the best weight loss plans have low carbohydrate diets. The carbohydrate itself is like a drug, and so when we cut carbohydrate way down, people will go through carbohydrate withdrawal. They'll get intense cravings for it, and so fentramine can actually help kind of you know, take the edge off those carbohydrate withdrawal cravings too. Yeah. Overall, it can be helpful. It's nothing magical. Again, it won't stop you from eating. You still have to be eating correctly, doing the right activity and exercise program, but it can be helpful on top of that. When you look at the big picture, when someone is in a, what I'll call a good weight loss plan, and they're doing, working on the right things, what I typically see is that fentramine or an appetite suppressant can add about eight to 12 pounds of extra weight loss. So, kind of, if you're doing all the right things, typically you're going to be, you know, undergoing weight loss. But fentramine adding it can add about eight to twelve pounds of extra weight loss there. Now, most people will get some minor side effects from taking fentramine. Okay? Almost everyone will get some dry mouth. Very, very common. Typically that resolves with time, and my answer to that, when people tell me, it's like, okay, we'll drink a lot of water. Um, you drink the water, it's going to help control appetite as well. It also kind of takes, you know, just drinking the water is something you're going to need in a good weight loss plan. So carry your water bottle around, drink plenty of water there. Many people also notice that when they start fentramine, they have that sensation like, I just had a couple of cups of coffee and they may feel like I am ready to go. Okay. And that's, they often like that side effect, which from my perspective, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, some people will notice they feel slightly jittery. They may feel like their heart is being slightly faster. Um, and they may feel like just, okay, just slightly anxious. Now, those sensations are actually a side effect of the medication. They're not how the medication works. Sometimes people think that fentramine actually boosts up their metabolism up significantly and that's how it actually works. And then they get the side effect and they think, yeah, I'm really ready to go, I'm jazzed up and it's helping me. And then those side effects go away. And they go away because that's what they are. They're side effects. They don't, that's not how the medication works. Those are side effects. They typically fade away. Many people don't even notice it. Okay. But some people will notice that, hey, I've had a cup of, cup of coffee sensation. Um, but typically that is a side effect that tends to fade away with time. It usually goes away within about seven to ten days. Okay. Um, now again, some people like that side effect. There's really nothing wrong with that. Um, but okay, just realize that's not really how it works. I mean, now some uncommon side effects there, boy, I just don't sleep well. Um, it may give me tremors. It could actually make blood pressure go up significantly. So it does have to be monitored. And if you get those side effects, the answer is easy. Quit taking the medication. Okay? Now, incredibly rare and really never truly documented. And there was a fear of potential addiction to fentanyl. And that's never actually been documented. The thought process there was that fentramine, the biochemical appearance of it, has a similar appearance to amphetamine. Now, amphetamine is addictive and it does boost your metabolism way up. But so since the biochemical structure looks similar, the original thought was that, gee, there's going to be overlap there. And subsequently, then people will get addicted to it and it's going to bump their metabolism and it's something just like speed people will be you know it'll be a 
drug that's running rampant on the streets. It's like, well, no, that's never actually proven and it's never actually happened. So it's something that we don't see. I'm never going to say things like that are impossible. We just don't see that. Now, there is some art to using fentramine or taking fentramine. Fentramine is one of those medications that it, it works when you take it. it. doesn't work if you don't take it. It isn't a medication that you have to take for like a number of weeks before it kicks in and then you have to wean yourself off of it. It's like, no, it's like taking a Tylenol. You have a headache, you take a Tylenol, it helps you. Um, well, fentramine also, it kicks in within about a half hour, 45 minutes and it's working, okay? And so it's not like you have to build up to it or anything like that. And it's the same thing if you don't want to take it, don't take it. What I tell my patients is that, okay, use it the days you, you're going to need it. Some days you may realize that, okay, I, you know, I, my day is nicely scheduled and today I probably won't need it. So it is okay to use it when you need it. Don't take it when you don't need it. So there's nothing magical. It's like, gee, I've got to take it every day. As physicians, we typically write for people to take it every day, kind of once a day dose. But there's no reason you need to take it every day. And you can take it you know, for the days you don't struggle. Some people only struggle on the weekends. Some people only struggle in certain situations. Some people struggle on during the week. And so use it then. It, it's, you can use it then, not use it other times. And I find it actually tends to work very well using it that way. Plus, it can actually be used long term. There's not a certain time frame when you have to stop taking it. Um, some of the original studies were done only for a couple of months. So if you actually opened up the PDR, the physician desk reference, and read about fentramine, it would say, oh, you got to stop taking it after a couple months. But that's because the original studies were only done for a couple of months. And longer term studies haven't been done. But it's been used for long term by many, many physicians have reported results with that. And we don't see problems with taking it on a long term basis either. I mentioned earlier there's kind of an art to taking fentramine. Fentramine lasts for about 10 to 12 hours. Most people don't wake up starving. So there's really not a reason to take it immediately when you wake up. Okay. Take it when you start struggling. So most people start getting hungry kind of late in the morning, into the afternoon, into the evening. So you want it working when you need it. So I usually have people take their medication about you know mid to late morning so it's really kicking in for that lunchtime afternoon effect and into the evening and then wearing off when it's time to go to sleep because if you find that hey i can't go to sleep very easily at night it's probably because you're taking your medication too too late right? and you just need to play with the timing then too so it only lasts again about 10 to 12 hours so play with the time you can either if you find i can't go to sleep then it's okay we'll take it a little earlier or if you find the other flip side is that if you don't, or if you find that I'm starving before I go to bed, and it's like, okay, we'll take it a little bit later in the day then. So there is some art to taking fentramine. Um, so overall, just looking at fentramine, it can be helpful for both medical weight loss as well as after surgery too. There's no reason it, it can't be used and it just needs to be monitored. So typically we do have to have those little one-on-one -on -one discussions intermittently. You need to, you know, to get the prescription. Um, and so if blood pressure has to be monitored. So some simple things like that. But it can be a safe medication, can be very useful. Again, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Takes the edge off hunger, won't prevent you from eating. And I find it very helpful for carbohydrate cravings. And typically, you can get a good about 8 to 12 pounds extra weight loss using fentanyl. All right, looking for more information, I encourage you to go to our Losing Weight USA website or just go to our corporate website. Corporate website is cfwls.com. Our Losing Weight USA is losingweightusa.com. Get more information. You can listen in on webinars that I do every single week, as well as get tips on uh, weight loss, as well as healthy recipes. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone. We'll touch base on this next podcast, and I'll see you. I will talk to you next time. Take care, everyone.